gon' put a chain on it. Know that I ride with the gang on it. Some nigga that lighted no chain when they make it home. I'm gon' drop some chains on it. They give a fuck about the fame, home. And I probably know I ride with the same home. And I ride to the top and I drop. I won't change on my niggas. I hope they don't change on me. Keep silent. I'm gon' put a chain on it. Know that I ride with the gang on it. Some nigga that lighted no chain. One of the dopest videos you ever seen in your life. They give a fuck about the fame, home. And I probably know I ride with the same home. And I ride to the top. All right, what is happening, Mozzie Gang? <laughs> man, uh, so today is actually it's a very beautiful day outside, man, and I am getting ready to go and pick up the Hellcat. So before I did that, I had to make a very important video. Uh, at first, wasn't going to do a video on this at all whatsoever, but I felt like at this point, it kind of had to be made, had to be done. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. So first and foremost, before you continue the video, if this is your first time joining myself, I am King Mozzie. Welcome to the channel. Hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man, and join this amazing family so we can go up all 2020 together. This is the year where we attack everything we ever wanted, every dream, every goal, every aspiration. Uh, unfortunately, uh, by the time I drop this video, well, I'm dropping this video today, so, but yesterday we got some terrible, terrible news from one of the great legends of all times. Uh, on and off the court, Kobe Bryant has passed away tragically, him and his daughter. I can only imagine losing my daughter, you know what I'm saying? I can only imagine how it would feel for my family to lose me and my daughter, you know what I'm saying? So for the fact that his family had to lose him and his daughter, and his daughter was like his twin, man. Um, I, uh, Me being an athlete, you know, I, of course I shed my tears because to me, if you ask me, Kobe and Jordan, like people like that, LeBron, like they are basketball. Like when you mention the NBA, LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan, those are the people's names you mentioned. But Kobe dropping 81 in the game, that's like some straight like 2K turn off the fatigue stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he changed the game for a lot of people. He is the reason why a lot of people even decided to play basketball, period. You know what I'm saying? He is a great, he is a legend. You know, even before he died, he was always going to be a legend. But, uh, the fact that he died the way he died and the fact that his daughter, you know, went with him, which was his twin, bro, uh, it, it was tragic, man. It's really tragic. But uh, we lost him, and I will always and forever have a lot of respect for Kobe for the way that he played the game of basketball, for the way that he put out passion for the game of basketball, and for the way he carried himself. You know what I'm saying? He believed in, you know, following dreams. He believed in standing up for what you believe in. And that's exactly what I stand up for, and that's exactly what I – some nails all in the dang driveway, bro. That's how people get flats. Absolutely not. <clears throat> but he stood up for following your dream, stand up for what you believe in. He said his count, his guidance counselor told him that he shouldn't play basketball, that he had never amounted to anything, that playing basketball would never amount to anything. Now he's the greatest legend that ever picked up the basketball. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the fact of you gonna have a lot of people that's going to tell you what you can and cannot do, what's possible, what's not possible. Everybody gonna have their own opinion because of whatever they feel like is is real to them. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to protect your dream with your life. You know, and that's what I stand up for. And that's why I always get on this camera and I do and I give it everything I got because it's a lot of people that will look at me and be like, oh, you know, he doing YouTube that you know, people a lot of people laugh. A lot of people gonna laugh at you for whatever you wanna do in life. You know, it's a lot of people that laughed at Kobe, a lot of people laughed at Jordan, Oprah. I mean, now they successful. You know, and I was always taught that the best revenge is just to become successful. You don't have to go and bash nobody because they, they feel like they talk down on you. So, oh, you know, you know, revenge is best served cold. No, just be successful. That's the best revenge you can give somebody. You know what I'm saying? And then you you be, if you really want to get back at a person, you go ahead and you share your success with that person. You know what I'm saying? You know, King Petty. You know what I'm saying? So, but, um, man, it's just a fact of really just standing up for what you believe in. You have to stand up for what you believe in. And I feel like... Stand up for your dreams, protect your dreams is something that's very, very important, you know, because at the end of the day, that's your, that's your life. That's what makes you happy. And then if it makes you happy and that's something you love to do, why not go after it? You know, don't worry about what people feel like is right. Don't worry about what people say is possible because everybody gonna have their own opinion. Everybody's perspective is different. Some people don't feel like their dreams will ever happen. And so for that reason, they don't believe in it. So of course, when it have to come from them talking to you or telling you about your dreams, they're not going to be able to tell you about it. They're going to tell you the same thing that they believe in their heart. That, oh, well, my dreams are not possible, so I'm going to tell this person the same thing. And they don't be, they don't, they don't do it intensely. It's just in their mind. Their mind doesn't have a register the fact that their dreams can really come true. It just takes a lot of hard work. It's not, it's nothing whatsoever, not even a little bit easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's why 
I tell people a lot of times, me and him like had the same conversation. A lot of people that came to us and talked about, hey man, you know, well, you know, well, I want to do YouTube, I want to do YouTube this, and I started, well, I started my channel that, I started, and I applaud them, you know what I'm saying? But I need to understand, it's more than what they just see as far as like, oh, we just go to Car Meets Record and we just got a bunch of subscribers. Absolutely not, we went, we worked a lot of hard work going out making videos, going to different dealerships, spending the whole day driving back and forth to different dealerships, trying to say, hey man, can we do a review here? Can we do it? And got told no a bunch of times doing videos here, trying to think, sitting down, hey bro, what kind of video do you think we need to do? Trying to come up with some kind of video to make something that's different from anybody else have ever seen. And it just, it's a lot of hard work that went into the stuff that we do. So it's not easy whatsoever. It's not like, oh, people, oh, they just go record and sit down and edit, no. Editing it is the hardest part to be completely honest. That's the hardest part. You know what I'm saying? But it's even harder when you have to go out and try to find good content. Anybody can pick up a camera and record anything. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it comes to hard work when you have to sit down and actually make and find good content and be able to adapt to certain people. You know what I'm saying? To adapt to people to make people feel like they can relate to you. You know, it's 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 that's that's the challenging thing, you know. But uh I tell people all the time the best way to become Anything that you want to be good at is to find somebody that you're inspired by that does the same thing you're doing and find out what you feel like they should have did better and you try to do that. You know what I'm saying? But make it make it your own. Don't try to copy out nobody else's style. Everybody's going to be inspired by somebody, but don't try to copy step for step everybody's, you know, or anybody else's, you know, process. You know, find it, make it your own because it's what's going to make people gravitate, gravitate towards you. I can't even say the word right, but you get the point. But crazy part, this ain't what that video is supposed to be about. I just kind of just went left with that one. But the video is about um, we had a situation, what not even situation, everybody know about it. We had the car meet at Omar's. So I'm put a clip in the video of the whole news feed. That's been a hot topic among neighbors and on social media. We are really, really to the point. We are so tired. Neighbors complaining hundreds of people packed outside Omar's Tires and Wheels on South Buckner for what was advertised online as a free smoke burnout meet. A car show that had parents holding babies on their shoulders, some spectators sitting on rooftops, causing congestion on the main road, all while watching vehicles in the lot spinning donuts and burning rubber. I, I couldn't believe it, first of all, because this is a business. Workers at the tire shop on Thursday say they never expected such a large crowd. They say a car club asked the owner to use his property for a show to celebrate one of its members who died. It's got very dangerous lately. But neighborhood organizers like Kenneth Wynn and Yolanda Williams complained these times. But so we had a we had a car meet at Omar's Omar's tire shop. Everybody know we always go to Omar's because we go up there and we buy tires. We do burnouts on this property because you know for the most part we car people. So everybody know the way you properly dispose of old tires is you burn them out. I just and I feel like this saving the environment. If you ask me, this is the same way you do anything else. The proper way to dispose of plastic trash is you put it in the recycle bin. So the proper way of disposing of old tires is you burn them out. Simple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, you say you we saving the earth. You know we don't save them, we burn them. You know, but uh, it's a place we always do that. Is you know, and it was nothing wrong with what we did. We was on private property, but uh, of course the news feed took it and tried to make it to a whole story about uh you know we street we illegal street racers and we do this all the time and we just messing up the neighborhood and we're gonna hurt somebody get somebody killed now it's unfortunate somebody did hurt and prayers go out to the guy that got hurt and to the guy that you know that was a part of the incident prayers go out to both of them but with that being said, it was nothing to where it was just like, oh, this is like some kind of illegal event that was going on. No, we was on private property. Uh, we had permission to be there by the by the owner of that property, so we can do whatever we want on private property. But the main issue was, and that me and B had this conversation, him like, whatever you want to call him. Me and him had the same conversation, and we was talking about like why the news feed actually took that one, you know, took that story and pretty much tried to turn it into something like, oh, well, they said that the whole meet was somebody in our car club got killed and that's the whole point of car meet. That was absolutely no, not, that had nothing to do with that car meet. That car meet came from me and B having a conversation. We said, hey, bro, a lot of people been asking us when we're going to have our own car meet. We always going to somebody else's, but we need to have our own car meet. It's been a while. When we going to do one? He was just like, hey, I already got that, you know, worked out and plan. I'm like, cool. So what about Omar? So Omar is a spot that's pretty much a guaranteed spot. You know, we know, we know we can just go to him like, hey, bro, we need to have a, you know, we need to have a nice little old car meet here. Is that cool? 
And our top 10, he gonna say, yeah, he with it. You know, now we, me and, me and B kind of went back and forth about it because we were just like, you know, that's a small area. You know, that the, the area that it was gonna be in was small. We was pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of people that was gonna come out. Now we didn't know it was gonna be that size, but we knew it was gonna be a lot of people that was gonna come out. So with that being said, we went ahead and ended up going with the Omar's, you know, idea, so cool. That's the whole that's the whole point of that car meet. It wasn't because somebody died or whoever with this, that, and the third. That was simply because we need to have a car meet. We had a location for a private area. Cool. That was the whole point of that. Nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, somebody ended up getting hurt. You know, unfortunately the ambulance was called out, you know, to the scene. The cops called out to the scene. Well the cops were already there because the the part the plate the place got like beyond packed out. So with them coming and seeing everything that went on and see everything that happened, eventually I knew it was gonna it was gonna get shut down eventually, some way, somehow, because it was a lot of burnout, a lot of smoke. We smoked out the whole street basically. Because the fact the smoke was, you know, the shop is directly next to the street. So it the smoke was eventually was gonna, you know, carry out to the street. And it was people like that was over on the overpass that was stopping on the overpass looking. And so when a guy got hit, EMS came to the scene and everything pretty much got shut down from there. But the fact is that the news feed took that and tried to build a story around it, which I understand it's the news. It's the news. You know what I'm saying? That's what they look for. They look for good stories. They look for good coverage. You know, anything, you know, they want to take a story, give it a twist, and sell it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what they do. That's what the people are there for to do. But it's the fact that me and Hemi Life have done so much for the community. We didn't done charity events. We didn't fed the homeless. And then even B's mom and one of my friends have even reached out to the news to get them to cover up what we've done. They've never responded to that. But the moment that we do something like this, they respond. And then they not only do they respond, but they twist the story and try to make it something that is completely not. So, uh, and B hit me up, man. I called him when it happened. And he was like, man, I think I want to make a story. He said, he said man, I'm pissed about it. He said, I, want, I think I want to make a video about it. And at first, I was kind of like, you know, like, I don't think we should make a video. Uh, I think we need to try to find a different way, like, you know, call them and go out there or something like that just to let them know how we feel. And he was just like, yeah, he said, I said, because I don't want us to look like what they already trying to label us as. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I want to make, like, no bashing video about it. I just want to just tell them, like, what's on our mind. Like, the fact that they was wrong for what they did, and that's absolutely not what happened. We didn't plan for that that incident to happen. That was a complete accident. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it was just unfortunate, bro. But it was the fact of that the news feed tried to make a story out of something that had nothing to do with what was going on. You know, and it just, to me, it just goes to show that they looking for a story. They, they I mean, but everybody know negativity sells. So they'll get more ratings and they'll get more views for their news channel off a negative event rather than they would off a charity event. You know what I'm saying? But it's just still like, you don't have to twist up a story. Oh, somebody got killed, so that's why they have it. No, 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 no. That's absolutely not why we had that charity event. And I feel, I feel my bro, you know, I feel my big brother's pain, man, as far as like, he was just like, man, you know, he was, he was beyond pissed. And I was too, but I didn't want to make a video about it at that time because I knew how I felt and I knew that video would have came off wrong would have came off as bashing you know especially the way he felt at the time too would have came off as a bashing video but it's the fact that they really tried to take something that was meant for good and turn it into something bad but like I said bro it's gonna be a lot of people it's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna try to tear you down it's gonna try to mess up what you got going on it's gonna try to stop your process but we not having it you know what I'm saying there was nowhere near what what, what happened at all it was completely a safe event on a private property. That's what the, the meet was for, a burnout event. But it got turned into something else. So uh, the fact that the guy got hurt was unfortunate. And I, again, I, my prayers go out to him and the guy that was part of the incident. But the fact that the news tried to make it to something that it wasn't was completely unacceptable. But I just have to come over here and say that, man. I had to come here and get my peace for that because I something I was holding in for a while. Uh, I had to pretty much get that off my chest, you know. But um, I'm finna go ahead and go get my Hellcat. So y'all make sure I stay tuned for that video because we're going up all 2020 like I've been saying. And we're not stopping. So you already know I in every last one of my videos, man. Whoever told you the sky the limit, they lied to you because we know absolutely no limit whatsoever, man. So let's get this money. <laughs>